the song of the Holy Spirit. In the theological writings of Archimandrite Sophronia of Essex, he focuses much on, he says, the hypostasis, the person of man, the person of God. Well, it sounds somewhat abstract to us sometimes. The longer I've been orthodox and the more I've contemplated that, he's, he's absolutely right, and it's, it's everything. It's finally starting to mean a little bit to me. It's not because I'm holy, it's maybe intellectually I'm getting it. He is concerned that we know how to talk to God. That there's a right way of talking to God and a wrong way of speaking to God. And we don't seem to get that sometimes. God is not an abstract. Our prayers are often very abstract and just words we go through and emotions. We're thinking about this, we're thinking about that. And God gives some idea and if I do these things, this idea will make me feel better. And then we do the same thing with our neighbor. We don't see God in our neighbor because all that's just really abstract. We, like, we love humanity, but we don't love that person in front of us, that individual. But yet we can't be real persons until we are in communion with those persons. Our hypothesis becoming a true man, a true person in Christ, is being filled up with Christ. And we get all that garbage out of the way and let him fill us up. And we become radiant and joyful human beings. This man in the gospel today did not see the image of God in his neighbor, and yet he only thought of himself. It's what the fathers call philatia, self-love. It's not a good kind of self-love. Only thought of himself. It was full of vainglory and full of just wanting to protect his hide. So he owes this great debt, of course, and he goes to the man and he says, how sorrowful he is, give me time, I will pay this off. The master is moved because he senses the pain. The man is speaking properly to God from a painful and humbled, seemingly, heart. But unfortunately, the man, after being forgiven such a tremendous debt, did not keep that shame in his heart, did not bear the shame of the humility that had come upon him, and went out and cast away a man who owed far less. It should have moved his heart. It should have taught him how to properly speak with God by being humbled and forgiving. Because if we don't have that kind of heart, God's not going to hear us. The prophet Samuel today provides examples of this. Our life has to be one of learning how to speak to God. His mother, Hannah, did not have any children, her and her husband Elkanah. <coughs> and she had a servant, though, who had many children and was quite rude to her about it and mocking and taunting. But Hannah, bearing the shame, bearing with humility, <coughs> didn't get angry with her, didn't criticize her, looked to her own faults and see what the problem was. So she goes, of course, to pray and she weeps and she cries out so much that they think she's drunk she cries out and the Lord hears her prayer and gives her Samuel so she dedicates Samuel to the temple because she knew how to speak to God with pain of heart because that's the common language we all have is pain we don't try to mask this constantly with the drugs of the world. I don't just mean drug drugs. I mean anything that's distracting us from God. We bear that pain and not talk about it to everybody. We just bear it with God as Hannah did and not complain about the neighbor. God will hear us. You have to think about how sad a situation this is. Cain spoke with God. He could be heard by God. But we don't hear God. That's because we're too busy running around, flitting around, and the moment we have a moment of silence, it almost kills us. I heard our commander at Roman, a blessed memory, talk about a girl that was at a camp at their, at their monastery one time, and the girl had an earbud in each ear with a different system playing at the same time. And the nuns asked her about it, and she said she couldn't bear being without it. It made her greatly distressed without noise because then she had to bear the pain. But in that pain is God. But then Samuel himself, as a young man, is in the temple. 
Not in the best of situations, the sons of Eli are rather rambunctious to be nice, Othni and Phineas, not, not good servants of God. And Eli, not doing anything about it was Eli's biggest fault, not correcting his sons. But Eli was initiated into the ways of God, and knew how to speak to God better than we do. And Samuel hears this voice, Samuel. He runs to Eli. Nobody's talking to you. What are you talking about? Go back to sleep. Here's the second time. Samuel. What are you talking about? Just dreaming. Go back to sleep. Go back to your bed. When this happens a third time, Samuel. He runs back to Eli, and then Eli has enough knowledge of things holding out to realize, okay, something's going on. So he says to go back to the next time you hear your name called, if you hear your name called. Say, here I am. So he hears it again, Samuel. He says, here I am, Lord. And what did he do to learn to speak to God? He humbled himself. He didn't trust his own will, didn't trust his own way of doing things, as the man did accuse the other man without seeking advice and cast him out. But he humbled himself and got the advice of the church, got the advice of those who were initiated into prayer, didn't consider himself great. The pain and the humility to take advice are the way we learn how to talk to God. And Samuel, of course, heard a rather horrible message about Hophni and Phinehas. He didn't say this with great pride or accusation, but out of love tells Eli that you better do something with your sons. He doesn't, and they have a horrible demise, ultimately. But they didn't listen to the way of talking to God. They didn't bear the pain. They didn't bear being silent. So we have to get to a place in our lives where we're willing to bear whatever suffering we have with humility. And realize it's not the end of the world because it might just be that horrible pain that we think is undurable that day. It might be when we stand before God with and he says, well done. You bore that pain in this life. Enter into the joy of the Lord. It might be because you didn't trust yourself all the time. You didn't try to change the ways of the church. You just did what the church said and humbled yourself. And he says, well done. You didn't have self-will and vainglory. You humbled yourself. It's important that we learn the things of God by these books and certainly by the scriptures. Very important. But we don't want to just be a collection of quotes that runs around and knows what the church says and what the Bible says. Knowing God is in here, not just in here. Literates can know God. It's important to know this thing, especially for a priest or someone. I have to teach people. I have to talk to people. But nonetheless, you ever listen sometime to our commander of Ramon talking about his three years in solitary confinement. He was an intellectual and he said up to that point he was just a collection of quotes. But then he had to realize that God wasn't out here. God wasn't just in the books or anything. God was in here. And the only thing he could survive with, he didn't know the passing of the days or the feast days. He didn't know what was going on in the world. He didn't see light here. He couldn't look out the window because the window was way above his head. So he had to go in here. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon you. And bear whatever the pain was of the quiet. And just also listen. Be willing to shut up and let God talk, as Samuel did, as Hannah did, as this other man should have done as he learned the first time when he went and cried out to his master, but failed to bear that in his heart. Brothers and sisters, learn to talk to God. Bear your pain. It's okay to have pain. Each of us has it. It's okay to not know everything and to go ask someone else what I should do to be a little better in the church. Okay. To be willing just to sit there with it and to listen to God because he's giving us the right way to communicate with him and he wants to reveal himself to our hearts. We must realize that, it's not an aside, tails off, that the judgment is not, we use the metaphors, we use the imagery of sitting there and having a juridical trial before us and you did this, you did that, and the other. The judgment is really kind of an instant thing, according to the more mystical fathers, the deep hesychastic fathers. 
It is when Christ comes, does he see himself when he sees you? Does he see Christ dwelling in you, in your actions, your words, your deeds, in every single thing that you do, every bit of minutia that you do? Does he see Christ? Or does he not recognize you because you didn't need him? You just went on your own will and did everything and didn't bear the pain that he gave you. He wants to see Christ in you. He recognizes his own image and likeness because he made us a little lower than the angels. You're the chief of his creation, a beautiful, beautiful, radiant thing that he desires as Samuel and Hannah to hear their voices and he might fill them up with himself. Amen. Amen.